Right, so I like to open with questions when I'm giving talks. So quick question, who here creates APIs? Put your hand up if you create APIs, whether it's public ones, microservices. Okay, okay, most of you. Who here consumes APIs? Who writes code that consumes APIs? Okay, most of you again. Now, when you're using APIs, would you rather hit the API directly? So create some JSON, make a REST request, or would you rather use a client SDK in your preferred programming language? So team API folks, put your hand up. <laughs> team SDK, put your hand up. Right, I actually don't need to give this talk anymore. See you later. <laughs> You've all given me the right answer. So yes, SDKs are better than APIs, and that's what, what I'm gonna talk about. I wanna start by looking at the developer experience of APIs, and then we'll look at the developer experience with SDKs, and kind of do that comparison to understand why SDKs are better. But I, I think we're, we're all on the same page, which is nice. So I'm gonna do a demo. Let's see if the demo gods are on my side. So I have got a llama store. This is like the Swagger Pet Store, but 100% more llamas. And I've got some auto-generated documentation here. Um, it's my, taken from an open API spec, I've got my auto-generated docs here. And this tells me how to use my API. And so I need to register a user, get an API token, use my API token, and then I can use that to get my, my llamas. Okay. So, I've got some code here to do this. This is the code I've written. I've got my URL set, I'm running this locally. I'm defining a new user object with a username and password, and I'm making a post request to create a user. Not a get request this time, this is an API for someone I like, not someone I hate. Uh, but yeah, so I'm making a request to get a user. So let's actually run this and see what happens. It failed. Ah, failed. Why did it fail? Let's have a look. What happened here? I've got an error back, a 422. Okay. Uh, missing email. Huh. I'm not sending the email. Now, there's nothing in my code here that's broken. There's nothing that tells me in my code that I've done something wrong, but I'm getting an error back. And so I have to go and look at the documentation. And in my documentation, oh, that's what it is. I need to send an email, and I'm sending a username. Okay, so I go back, and I put email in here, and I call that you know, llama at liblab.com. Now I call this, yay, it works. So this just shows one of the first things when I'm using an API directly. I don't have type safety. I've got some JSON here. I'm putting strings in here. I can put any old rubbish in here. I won't know till I call the API whether or not I'm doing the right thing. I can read the docs, and if I've got great technical writers producing great docs, I know what I'm doing. If the docs are terrible, I could follow the docs and end up not working until I call the API and it fails. And this is obviously not great developer experience. So, I've created my user. I want to use my user now inside a bit of code to get a list of llamas, because we all love llamas. So I'm doing the same thing here. I've got um, my URL. I've got some JSON to create an API token, because the docs tell me I need an API token. I'm using the email this time, not the username, because I've read the docs. And I'm going to send my token. I'm going to get my token back. It's a bearer token. I'm going to set it in my headers and make an API call. Okay, let's give this a try. Oops. Oh, now I've got a 401, could not violate credentials. Again, my code runs, there's no problem with my code, but something's not working with this. So I'm doing something wrong. Okay, what am I doing wrong? You know what, it's a credentials thing. Let's just print my token, see what happens. Oh, my token, oh, my token's an object. My token's some JSON that comes back. Okay, with fields. Okay, so what I need to do is, I need to do, uh, access token, Oop. okay, now if I do that, now I do it, now it works and gets me my list of llamas. So again, I have to kind of read the docs, I have to look at this object, I have to see what's come back, I have no type safety. This is not the perfect experience that I want as a developer, I want my life to be easy. Anyone here like their life being easy? Who likes an easy life? Yeah, all of us, we want life to be easy, and this hitting the API directly does not make my life easy. Too many magic strings. You know, I have my endpoints defined as slash user, slash token. There's JSON I have to deal with. 
magic strings in there. I've got a username, email. I can make spelling mistakes. I don't have this safety. It's too easy to make silly mistakes. And every time I make a silly mistake, it takes me iterations in my code to try and get that right. So how do we normally fix this as developers? Okay, this is a common problem. How do we normally fix this? Because you're all probably sitting there going, yeah, but I don't call REST directly. I, there's, there's a thing I do. So we all normally fix it with some kind of layer of abstraction. Pretty much every single computer science problem can be solved with a layer of abstraction. Especially the problem of too many layers of abstraction, you solve that with another layer of abstraction, yes. <laughs> but we build layers of abstraction over our code. So we wouldn't necessarily create JSON. We would define an object, and we would map that to JSON somewhere. We would build some kind of service method that wraps the endpoint so that if something's broken, I fix it in one place and I can have it fixed everywhere. And the best layer of abstraction over this really is a full featured SDK. So an SDK, what I mean here is an SDK for your API, one that wraps every single type that you might send, every single JSON object you might send, and wraps every single endpoint. It's a complete end-to-end -end experience of your entire API created inside an SDK. That is the best layer of abstraction that you can create. Best by far. Now, you say this to people, oh, you should build an SDK for your entire, uh, entire thing, end-to-end, -end, whatever. You know, most people go, yeah, that's great, Jim. But I've got, I got, I got questions. I've got two questions for you on this. I've got questions. I've got questions. And the first question they ask is, well, should I really bother? You know, if I'm a SaaS company, my product is my API, should I really bother? I've got some fantastic technical writers. They've created amazing documentation. Should I really bother creating an SDK? Well, yes. Your users want a better developer experience. This is a fact. Whether you're building externally, your SaaS platform, you're building externally, or whether you're building internally, microservices, your users want a better developer experience. I can guarantee you that. Because we live in a time of good developer experience. Now, I ran a little, little survey on Twitter ages ago asking the same question, APIs versus SDKs. 56% of people said SDKs. Now, this is not necessarily good quality data. A lot of front-end folks will um, usually write JavaScript that hits APIs directly and uses JSON, so it's kind of the front-end folks will skew it more towards REST API, but still 56% of people want an SDK. They want that better developer experience. Because, as I said, we live in this time of better developer experience. There is a strong focus from a huge number of companies on improving developer experience. Yeah, we look at kind of the history of computer science. It was mainframes, then it was desktop, then it was web, then it was mobile, and now there are so many tools out there to help developers be better, help us deliver quicker. There is more problems in the world that we need to solve with code. We don't want to be faffing around with all the simple problems. We want good developer experience to make us faster. Whether it's things like containerization, whether it's AI-driven code, we are expecting a really high developer experience from the tools that we use. So users want this level of developer experience. And SDKs, if you have SDKs, you get your boilerplate code provided. And that gives your users a better developer experience. They don't have to write the boring rubbish again and again and again. They don't have to map JSON all the time, things like that. And, but by boilerplate code, they also mean you've got SDKs that will have things in there that you don't need to think about. Authentication. You know, how do you authenticate your API? Well, you can just embed that inside your SDK to make it easy for people. How do you do retry? If it's your API, you know the best retry strategy. Maybe you only allow one call every 10 seconds. If it's been nine seconds since the last call, you make them wait a second and try again. Whatever it is, you know how to embed that inside your SDKs. Object mapping. You know how to map JSON to the objects that you need. URL management, you know what endpoints need to be called. You can embed these best practices, this good developer experience inside an SDK. And the other question people ask is when you say, yes, SDKs, they're great, they're fantastic, whatever. The other question people ask is, but doesn't it take ages to build an SDK? Doesn't it take a long time to build an SDK? Are we talking like months and months of, of development to do this? Well, it can, if you're strange like that, but no. We have tools to help with this process. Just like an SDK provides good developer experience to your users, there are tools to provide good developer experience to you as an SDK generator. So we have tools to help. So let's just do a quick bit of math. Let's focus on microservices. Okay. There are companies, who works for a company that has microservices? Yeah. 
And in this company, you probably have all these microservices talking to each other, yeah? And you have to keep writing code that talks to all these different microservices, yeah? So imagine you have 10 microservices, and you have 10 teams that use these different microservices for whatever, users, tickets, whatever. Okay. And you're one of these companies that's got self-forming teams, teams can choose their own programming language. So maybe you have five using TypeScript, three using Java, two using Go. If you don't have SDKs, then every single team will probably have to build some kind of layer of abstraction. They will build some kind of wrapper, because they're not gonna be calling REST directly. And they will have to do that over every microservice that they use. And no team is gonna to wanna to share with the other team. I've built it this way. I'm very opinionated. I want it this way. Team over here, well, I don't like that. I'm going it this way. I'm gonna build this thing. And I, team over here, well, I don't need all the endpoints. I need this endpoints. Everyone will build it differently. That's how we work. Humans do this all the time. The not invented here syndrome. I wanna build this for my team only. Okay. So 10 teams, 10 microservices, you end up with 100 wrappers being built. So think how much developer time is wasted by having all these different teams building all these different wrappers around the, your microservices. And imagine you scale that up, you've got more microservices. 70, 100, 1,000, whatever. Or you want to add another programming language, another team starts. Oh, we don't want to use TypeScript, Java, C Sharp. We want to use Rust, you know, because we love Rust, whatever. Okay, we're now going to build 10 Rust layers. And the whole thing scales up. So I am lazy. I automate all the things. I don't want to have to build layers of abstraction. I don't have to build full feature SDKs. I want this to be automated. That is what I want. Now, in a particular case, I like to automate the LibLab because I work for them. But I like automated SDK generation. I want a tool that's going to generate an SDK for me. And the fact is, this can be done. There are tools that will take your open API spec. This is your good quality documentation for your API. And they will spit out SDKs that allow you to have much better developer experience. So you know what, let's actually look at this. Let's do some demos. So I have got, over here, I have got my open API spec. Let me just bring it up. So this is an open API spec. We all know open API, don't we? Yep, hands up if you know open API. Okay, pretty much everyone, yep. This is my open API spec. Uh, I've got, my endpoints, I've got, you know, Llama, it's got a get method on here. It's got a schema that says it returns this Llama. I go to my Llama, it's got properties. My spec defines the objects that it's gonna send and receive, and it defines the endpoints that you can call. So this can be converted into SDK code. And so what I can end up with is an SDK that gives me everything that I need to have great developer experience based off my open API spec. Developer experience like autocomplete, IntelliSense, inline documentation, things like that. So let's write some code live to, to, do, to create a user, create an API token, and get some llamas, just taking advantage of the power of an SDK. So, pray to demo gods, this is gonna work. So I wanna create a user. Okay, so I do llama store and I tap dot, I get a list of, of things available to me. I don't need to read the docs. For hard problems, yes, I want to read those lovely docs being created by our technical writers. But I don't need to read the docs. I press dot, I can see here. And I've got user. Sounds about right. Got a user. And under user, I have register user. Okay. So just by using IntelliSense, I can work out a register user. And this register user takes a register user request. Okay, let's create one of those. Register user request. Oh, the IntelliSense is, also, is helping me. Open brackets, this takes a password and email. So I can't make that mistake about a username because I can see it written in their email. This helps me do this. And even, you may notice, GitHub Copilot has picked up and started filling things in because my AI tool has looked at my code base, looked at my SDK, and knows that I want stuff in here. So let's do Llama 2, because we've already got Llama. And, da, da, da. Oh. and GitHub Copilot itself even picked up password. Okay. That's how I create a user. Nice. I want to get an API token. Okay, how do I get an API token? Oh, well. Again, Copilot's filling this in because Copilot can look at my SDK code. Isn't this great? Okay, well, let's take a token. Um, in fact, for this email, maybe I can use my, oh, let's just copy that from above, really. You know. And this gives me a token. Okay, now I need to set the API token. 
Copilot's making this too easy. But if we think about the mistake I made the first time around, I passed a token in to my API token. It didn't work. Set API token. Uh, in fact, Copilot got it wrong. Copilot got it wrong. I do set access token. There we go. Set access token creates, takes a string. I can see it there. Takes a string. I've got my documentation. Sets off token key. Not great documentation. I'm not a technical writer. Uh, but it tells me it takes a string. And I can see here that this token here is an API token object. So it's just telling me in the types that I need to do something different. And there's my access token object. Now, Python's not a strongly typed language, so it would let me make these mistakes. But in a strongly typed language, the compiler would go, nah. The compiler wouldn't do that if I'm making a REST request. It would let me put the wrong names in my JSON. So I get this much nicer experience here. And all the way through, I want to get llamas. OK, I mean, yeah. It's just, it's just Copilot helps me. Who here uses Copilot or Code Whisperer or other such tools? OK, those of you who don't, you should. But the thing is, just because I've got the code here. So Copilot is actually looking at my code base. It's looking at the SDK that, I, that I've got here. And it's finding out how I can auto-complete everything. Absolutely beautiful. So now if I run this, oh, there you go. Oh, it's printed out some Llama store models. Let's just actually print out the name of my Llama. Let's just change this to print out the name of my Llama. So, it's slightly, so the output's a bit nicer. But bang, it works, it works, it works. I haven't had this iteration of I do the wrong thing because the types have helped me do it. And that's the one of the biggest upsides to an SDK is I get types. I get this amazing level of type safety. So let's do that math again. Let's do that math again. Okay. We have our 10 microservices, five teams using TypeScript, three teams using Java, two teams using Go. When I generate an SDK, when I use a tool like, like LibLab, I say, give me an SDK. I can specify the languages that I want that SDK in. So I can say, give me TypeScript, Java, and Go, and C Sharp, and Python, whatever. Generate me all these languages. And it will spit out all the SDKs in one go. So once I've kind of got this set up and working, I get all my SDKs at any one time. And so if I need to have 10 microservices, I need to generate 10 SDKs, do 10 SDK generations. Generate me an SDK for all these languages, done. That for every single microservice. I can build that into my CI CD pipelines for my microservice generation. We've gone down from 100 to 10. And then there's the whole maintainability of this as well. Every time something changes, I can regenerate a new SDK. I don't have to invest teams in building new wrappers. I can regenerate SDKs. Scaling up is easy. Say I'm generating three languages. If I want to generate a fourth language, I can literally put an entry in a configuration file to say, add this language, and bang, the language spits out. I want to add a new microservice, OK? Just embed my, tool, uh, my generator into my tool chain for that microservice. It spits it out. It's very low effort using these generators to build a high quality SDK in all the languages that I want. Maximum developer experience, minimum developer effort. It takes a little effort on my part for me to generate SDKs to build a much better developer experience for you as a user. But I say, I feel, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here. We all agree, yeah? SDK is the way forward. We're all team SDK, yes? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. All I will say is you don't publish APIs. Publish amazing SDKs. If, you're a, if you are a SaaS platform, you want to publish those amazing SDKs. If you're building microservices, don't just publish microservices. Publish amazing SDKs. That's how you make developers' life experience, developer experience better. Make your developers' lives better. So thank you very much.